What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Queer Collective Podcast. My name is Carbon. And I'm Emily. Thank you, Emily. You're welcome, Carbon. Back to you. Thank you. Uh, back to me. So the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> and the children outside are also frightful. And the snow is frightful. So what I'm are we scared. talking about today? <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about da -da -da, crying in public. I love crying in public. <laughs> what? Are you serious? It's like a love-hate relationship. It's what do you kind mean? Of, huh? It makes me feel like the main character. <laughs> what? Main character energy. And like, it's the same kind of vibe as crying in the shower. I feel like someone like you might relate to that mm. because I know you hate mm. showing vulnerability in front of strangers and you hate asking for help. Oh, you're outing me right now. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Do you like crying in the shower? Yeah, I don't. I just I don't like crying. You're not a big cry. So to begin with, right? Yeah. But if I'm gonna do it, mm -hmm. either in my bed or in the shower, mm. it feels nice. Yeah, I feel like crying is a really nice release of emotion. Sometimes that's fair. You know, mm -hmm. the thing I think my issue with crying is that first of all, it's not easy for me to do like physically. I don't yeah. know why, but like some people like they're like, okay, when I get home, I'm gonna cry. Oh, and then, I don't plan it like that. Do you know that. what I mean? But like, no, say nobody plans it, but say that they're like, they had a really, really bad day at work. Oh, okay, they're driving yeah. home and they're like, man, when I get home, mm. water works. Sometimes and then they I would do, do it. it in the car. Oh my God, I'm going to cry when you drive when you're <laughs> Like while I'm stuck in traffic yeah. and I can tell other people can see me yeah. crying. I've like crying in the bathroom at work. I'm in a lot of places. Jeez. In the library, on the bus, walking home. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of places to cry. Yeah. Yeah, so my main crying places are either in my bedroom mm. or in the shower. You know when you're in the shower and it's more dramatic because the, the water is falling on you mm. and you're just like, oh, drama. And when you're when the water's falling on you i don't know if you do this but i picture myself like it's like moody it's dark it's like foggy and misty outside and it's raining and you're like in the woods or something and you're just like <gasps> wow you picture yourself like not in the shower oh yeah like i'm in like the forest oh, and yeah. yeah 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 i'm being raw yeah. and emotional but i'm also exaggerating on purpose you yeah. know what i mean like, yeah. do you know what? Do you ever, like, cry and you're just like, fuck it. I'm just going to, like, go really it. go yeah. for it. So like, I'm the, already here. Yeah, Mine in the shower with the water falling on mm. you. And it's, like, you feel good. Like, the water's warm. <laughs> I picture myself, like, it's in a movie. There's fog. It's raining. Yeah. Uh, there's people watching me at this point in my mind, right? Wow. So I'm just like, I'm going to give them a show. But there's nobody there. So i'm free to give any show i want i have a question so you don't like crying in front of strangers but in your imaginative shower scene mm -hmm. wood scene i suppose yeah there's people watching i don't picture like people yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i just kind of feel the presence of mm. the spectators okay do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, I picture like what the camera angles are gonna look like. Like, <laughs> what? It's, but the scene is me crying in the shower. Like, I'm not somewhere else. It's like a dramatic, like middle aged white lady, like having her moment. You know, like this is her. This so is so in your head. You're is, middle aged. Yeah, and like a white lady. And I'm but like, <laughs> that's not in your head. Yeah, but I'm not middle aged. You're a white lady. I'm not middle aged. <laughs> Don't put that on me. But yeah, that's what I do. But I especially do it when I'm like out in public. It's kind of a bit of a love hate relationship for me, though, when it's in public, because part of me is like, I don't want people to see me crying right now. But another part of me has that mindset of being in the shower where it's like it feels like drama in my head and I see feel the dramatization, but I don't want the actual people around me to be like come up and talk to me. You mm -hmm. know, like if I'm crying in public, I'm not in the mindset to talk to anyone. But do you want them to see like when you say no. like, for example, when you say I'm crying in public, so like I don't want people to see me, but I like, is it also like at the same time, I do want people to see me? <laughs> That's a good question. And I think we're going deeper than I've ever gone on that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like 
and this is me exposing my ego, but okay. I feel like it low key is. Again, I don't like c- crying in public, but a little bit of it, do you think, is like, I want attention. You know what? Like I, a little bit. While you were talking, I just figured it out in my head. Ooh. It's because every time I've cried in prob- public, I've been in like an absolute rock bottom. Like something really shit has just happened or I'm in a lot of pain and I just don't give an F anymore. So you, you just don't care. I don't give a shit. But it's do like, you look want... at me, don't look at me, whatever. But don't come and talk to me. Like I'm right. too, I don't want to talk to you. But do you want somebody to like feel bad for you from afar, for example? no because i don't want someone fully to like see me and feel like they need to come over and be like are you okay you know a lot of the time i don't want that there's only been one scenario where i did want that and i'll tell the story today Ooh, please do i'm gonna tell you i think three stories today please okay start (laughs) so the first story i want to tell these aren't in chronological order they're just in the order that they're coming up in my brain this story was probably like I want to say three years ago, maybe a bit longer than that. And this was probably one of the worst days ever. I'm living in Port Credit in Mississauga uh, at the time. And I'm traveling into Toronto every day on the GO train to go to school at Ryerson. So I'm waking up. I think it's six o'clock in the morning to get to my 7 a.m. class. So I'm at the train station. I'm on my period and I'm like sitting on on the train with my roommate at the time and I start feeling like intense cramps Ugh. like I can't move and I'm like sweating it's the worst but this is like, like I have the worst ever I have really bad cramps and this was like the worst I have ever felt Jeez. it was insane yeah. and I walked over to the bathroom and I was like sitting in like the train car bathroom and I realized my stomach was so bloated what it was like really really bloated like it looked strange and then I sat down on the toilet and I'm like freaking out I'm like sweating I don't know what to do and I'm texting my roommate out there I'm like I don't think I can move like I can't stand up I don't know what to do and I'm hearing the different train stops passing by like it's like you know what I mean I'm like I'm getting closer and closer to my stop and I don't know what to do because I don't feel like I can stand up and then I'm also freaking out because I have a test at seven o'clock in the morning Uh, yeah (laughs) you have a test yeah that changes everything but my roommate also had a test and she's in like nursing and it was like really freaking important you know what I mean she's in dental actually so she helps me get off the train and I knew that she was in a hurry so I felt bad I was like she's like are you okay and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm fine you go ahead and I'm like I'm pretty much almost crying at this point and then i think it's like 6 30 and i'm in union station downtown toronto i pretty much just get down to the bottom of the stairs away from the tracks and i'm trying to call my partner at the time she didn't pick up i tried to call my mom at the time she didn't your mom at the time you have different moms now I just tried to call my mom. She didn't <laughs> she didn't pick up. And I was at this point I started freaking out because I can't move. Like I know that I need an Advil to like at least even walk. Yeah. Right? So then I'm like crouched down and all of these commuter people are just stomping right by me. And I honestly was really hoping in that moment that someone would stop and oh. ask me if I was okay. Cause like this I is the just one time. I just needed someone to offer me an Advil. Yeah. You know? Like that's all I needed. And yeah. like no one was like stopping and i think at this point i was trying to make people see that i was crying but also i was like sitting on the ground and i feel like maybe people just thought i was a homeless person and they were trying to get their work which also sounds shitty that they're like ignoring people yes and in general in toronto Mm -hmm. right when you see somebody crash down on the ground 99 percent of people Mm. 99.99 just walk right past them Mm -hmm. they're not like huh what is that about they're like "Eh." Which is kind of the messed up part yeah, about it. Like I really of needed help. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I We're ended desensitized, up... desensitized. Exactly. Yeah. I ended up calling an Uber to just drive me like five minutes to a Rexall. <laughs> 
That's but I had to like I was like really hopping like clinging onto the walls trying to get out to the street and then I finally got to this car and like I was just in so much pain I got the Advil and I was like about 15 minutes late for class but the person was like the prof was just explaining the test at that point so I made it yeah but I was still just like in pain all day right I later found out that I have like ovarian cysts so that's what it was I think super fun potentially it had ruptured and that's why my stomach was so bloated but it was the most intense pain i've Dude, like ever felt and i've broken ang- i've broken ankles as you have heard <laughs> yeah it was intense that and then extremely intense after that the day continues <laughs> so to treat myself at lunch i was like wow i've really freaking been through it i'm gonna go buy myself like a nice little some street food or something so i got myself like i can't remember i think i got myself like a falafel pita or something falafel wrap i don't know so i go i get that um and then i head off to my next class and once i get into that classroom i'm like sitting down talking with a friend i think i tell my friend about what happened and then i reach into my bag and i can't feel my wallet anywhere Wow. I had nothing left in me, <laughs> yeah, no you kidding. know, and I just snapped like I think I told her I was like, oh, I think I left my I lost my wallet and I could like feel the tears coming. But I didn't want the people like in my immediate classroom to see me crying. I'm like, that's embarrassing. So I just like packed up my bag extremely quickly. Like I had literally just sat down and unpacked my bag. And well, when it's like you you know you mm-hmm. have the tear like on the verge of your yeah. eye and you're oh, like yeah you're like trying to stop it from fully falling down you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like we need to move quickly boys go 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 <laughs> so <laughs> i head out i think everyone was a bit like what on earth just happened but the second i step out of the door i like just start bawling my eyes out and i'm like running down the stairs of this building because i'm like fuck the elevator i might get trapped in there with someone and then I have to like explain Imagine. myself so uh. i'm like running down flights of stairs and i the first thing that i think i'm worried about is someone like stealing my credit card so i'm like sitting there i'd search through my bag again trying to see if i could find it it wasn't there i think i called my dad crying he said i was like i don't have my presto pass like i don't know how i'm gonna a presto pass for people not in toronto i don't know it's like the thing that you tap to get on the bus so i didn't have that and i couldn't get home and i was just like frustrated at that point i probably could have like found something to paid for it. i don't know but i was just like just come get me i'm tired of it i'm sore i'm in pain so he drives all the way from burlington to come pick me up which is really sweet of him and yeah, that's very but sweet. the thing was i didn't tell him about what had happened earlier about like my sis and everything so he's like okay can you just come walk down to lakeshore because i'm gonna get in um i'm gonna like get trapped in a bunch of traffic coming up to you and i was in so much pain and i had to walk all the way probably like 10 blocks to go down to lakeshore oh my and God. i'm like oh, oh it was so bad i don't why know why didn't you just tell him he was already coming so far to come and help me that i think i just felt bad i didn't want to trap him in traffic yeah i suppose you know so that was a time where you wanted to cry in public or wait so that part of the story isn't over yet so i'm outside of this building at ryerson there's a lot of hustle and bustle going around like there's a lot of people out there walking about and i am just uncontrollably crying outside of this building and i don't want people to see me but i'm like (sighs) and i'm on the phone um because once i call my dad he's like okay you should probably like all of my information was in there he was like you should probably call like about your social insurance number and you should call about your credit card and like do all of that stuff so i did it i was calling all these numbers on the same day yeah literally right when i lost it so i was calling the credit card company and i'm like bawling my eyes out on the phone to them and (laughs) this homeless guy walks over and he's like spare some change and i'm like i know i just lost my wallet (laughs) he was like oh my god okay and then he just backs away slowly oh my god the stupidest part about it though is right after basically i called the credit card company (laughs) no you know i think i called like the social insurance or whatever like the cra to call about my social insurance insurance number and right after i called for them to like flag my social insurance number so every time it's used they have to like call me to confirm i like reached in my bag to grab something and i found my wallet oh my god (laughs) i was just you know when you're so emotionally distressed already that just like you're not seeing or doing anything clearly like that's what happened because i had been i had looked through that bag like four times so i don't know i don't understand how that happened but yeah 
Oh my gosh. And then my dad got me and I just like, I didn't even tell him that it was there. <laughs> You're just like, yep, I lost my wallet. Gotta go. I was, I think I fell asleep in the car because I was just like, it was such a bad day. <laughs> that sounds like a really terrible day. Not yeah. Gonna lie. yeah. Especially the whole like not be, being in so much pain that you can barely walk. Yeah. Is just, pff, I know that. So that story was two of the stories in one so that's there's two that's two of the stories because i cried two separate times so that was two stories realistically losing my wallet and the cyst yeah fair enough that counts wow as two. two in one i can't believe that two of your three cl- crying in public stories happened on the same day yeah well those that's are messed just up man those that's are the a most really dramatic. bad day it was a really bad day but those were the most dramatic ones that i feel like sharing the other ones i just like was exhausted and I started crying on the bus or something or like my my ex broke up with me and I was just like bawling my fucking eyes out you okay, know yeah that's fair and it's just I don't want to talk about that right now yeah fair <laughs> enough I'll just tell you guys the funny ones <laughs> what's the next one about okay so the next one some people students you may be able to relate to this this is about crying in the library Ooh. you ever cried in the library nope yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a university program that I probably shouldn't have been in. I didn't like realistically, I didn't really like it. I was really having to force myself to be good at it. If you mean the sense. one that you just took? Yeah. Yeah. I Business didn't like that commerce. too much. That wasn't fun for me. It was a lot of math. <laughs> like it felt rewarding to show people wrong that like I could do it because there was a lot of guidance counselors and people who told me I couldn't. You're really about that. Like, I love pe- proving like, people wrong. Okay. So that's why I was like, do you even like this or are you mm. just trying to prove a point? I think that it, I literally got a whole degree to prove a point. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Like, it was also a practical degree. Yeah, of course. And it's like, it's good that you did it and that you got a degree. I think it's because I have like a learning disability and ADHD. So my whole life, people have really underestimated me a lot. This is true. People always tell me what I can't do and it drives me insane. I hate that. Too. So I've like, kind of flipped it before i didn't used to care honestly yeah but then in high school once people started telling me like you need to drop down to applied classes like you can't you should go to college or you should go into like a trade like you can't do that you're not smart enough to do this you know okay that's like it drove me nuts and also just like none of your business exactly it was really rude and presumptuous the if somebody tells you that yeah you're gonna Either you're going to be like, well, I'll show you or it could completely destroy your confidence. And then you might be like, well, they said so. I guess I'll just amount to nothing. So I'll accept that now. Mm -hmm. And then you end up not trying. Yeah. Encourage the kids. And I I think it was kind of chalked down to just like bad teachers as well. Like they weren't good at explaining things to people who don't naturally understand math. Okay, well, that's not a teacher, though. Okay, A lot of people who are just good at something become teachers. Can we pause the regularly scheduled curriculum of crying in public to just give a PSA? (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Teachers, just because you're really smart at something and you get it right away, it doesn't mean that you can teach. Yeah. And it also doesn't mean that you're a good teacher either. Mm -hmm. I feel like the best teachers are the ones that had a hard time understanding and now they want to explain it in a way that is broken down and makes sense for the people who also have a hard time understanding. Exactly. I feel like those are the best teachers because like I've had plenty of teachers that are mm. like geniuses. Yeah. They know all the stuff and They're all the, the numbers and they expect you to know it instantly as well. And when yeah. you don't get it instantly, they make you feel like garbage and like, like you you're should so drop down to stupid. Applied. Yeah. I had physics teachers in high school like that where they were like, all right, literally my first day walking into my physics class in high school was like, Mm. he literally pulled up a screen. He was like, this is what a university class looks like. And it was like, oh, that's such a lie. Yeah, it was like a big like stadium like one. Not stadium, but you know, like a lecture hall, a lecture hall. And some of them, there's so many people there that some of them are standing. They can't even sit. Like that's the picture that he chose to show us. And he was like, majority of them will drop out you will too that physics isn't for you like that was the whole premise of his class i hate when people start classes like that it's like your job is to teach me not to discourage me from learning something yeah right it's like i came here to learn physics and you're telling me that uh, this is public education like yeah that seems like like their laziness in my mind like they're too lazy to teach people who aren't instantly gonna get it and who aren't willing to spend all their time reading a physics textbook 
But thank you for listening to another one of my TED Talks. Back to our regularly yeah, scheduled so programming. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was in like doing my Bachelor's of Commerce. Obviously, there's a lot of finance classes with a lot of challenging math. And probably for some people, it wouldn't seem like challenging math. But for me, it was very challenging. <laughs> Fair enough. But the thing was, I really felt like I needed to be on Dean's List every single semester because to prove, wrong? to prove a point. I don't know why. It was like I well told myself I had to do it and I held myself to such extreme pressure. Well, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question to that. Okay. Are you going to show these teachers that told you not to? Like, are you going to show them the Dean's List? Are you going to show them your degree? I guess no. <laughs> well, then who are you proving this to? Yourself, Myself, really. But think. like you said that they motivated that that's a thing and like i i had to go to therapy because i was putting such extreme pressure on myself yeah to do this properly you know not properly. not properly to do it like perfectly. perfectly yeah yeah like i had to be perfect and i never used to be this way in high school like in high school i would always get c's like i was a horrible student but in university i got so obsessed with it and no one in my life puts pressure on me like my mom and my dad are like so okay with me being completely mediocre <laughs> like you know what i mean like they've always been the kind of people where it's like look and like be whoever you want like do whatever yeah you know but I told myself I had to do this and then in my mind I felt like I was letting everyone down if I didn't and when I was talking to like my therapist she was like what's the worst thing that will happen if you don't do Get well on Dean's this list every you... single time right? yeah yeah and I I really had to sit there and think about it and it did make me relax a little bit but I didn't want to let that goal go either way Right. If that makes sense. No, I, I think it does make sense. I, and I completely agree with the therapist of like, what's the worst thing that will happen? Because, you know, something that I heard uh, a while ago it was actually while I was a personal trainer. I had a mm -hmm. client that was talking about she was an accountant. Mm -hmm. and uh was talking about like her degree and i don't know we used to just talk about each other's yeah. lives right yeah and at one point she said well an accountant who gets a's is what an accountant mm -hmm. an accountant who gets b minus is what still an accountant yeah and i was like huh yeah yeah, you both get the same piece of paper, the exact yeah. same degree. Like, you don't get a higher status of the degree. No. And I was like, that kind of like, I don't know. That for some reason stuck with me. Yeah, it literally doesn't matter at all, really, when you're getting a job. No one even asks to look at your transcript. It's yeah. more. Just, Nobody's like, but did you get A's though? Yeah, it's like, it's a thing for you, I think, in your mind. Yeah. It is something you could put on your resume, I guess, like teens list. I yeah, I know. guess. Yeah. But yeah it doesn't it really doesn't matter that much <laughs> unless you're like applying for another degree you know like your master's or something. right anyway we've gotten far from the point the point is i had a lot of pressure on myself that wasn't coming from anywhere except internal mm -hmm. so i was sitting in the library i was trying to understand this physics or not physics <laughs> that was me <laughs> yeah i was trying to understand this finance stuff because i had a test the next day and i was going through things and i'm pretty sure i was going at the pace where i had studied for about one chapter a day and Whoa. i had only that's a lot is it i think so a chapter a day that seems like a lot to me it was like I right before know. the exam so it was almost like reviewing i was doing all the review questions okay. each day you know what i mean and like yeah. writing notes on it fair enough and the thing was like in exam season you have like a uh, several exams back to back so you don't necessarily have as much time as you would hope to have you know, like yeah, I, fair in enough. an ideal world. Yeah, yeah. So I had three chapters left and it was already 10 p.m. at night. And my Ooh. exam was the next day at nine. I don't know. I was so frustrated that I just started crying in the library. And I was like, it honestly just felt good, though. <laughs> Was there anybody in the library? Yeah, it was exam season. It was full. But the were you thing like was, sobbing or was it just like silent tears? At first, it was silent, <laughs> and then what? And then it got kind of loud. I was like, not really loud. It was like you could hear that someone in the room was crying. You just know, like there was some like sniffles? the sniffling yeah. and everything. You could hear that. For and you're sure. just like, oh, yeah. 
put my headphones on because I got my own test to worry yeah. about. I don't got time for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sad thing is, man, in university libraries, you hear people crying in the library like, like, all, all the, the time, time, right? All yeah, the time. that's messed up. Yeah. You hear stories of people in like U of T, for example, that even commit suicide because they're so mm -hmm. depressed and stressed and mm -hmm. school, the structure of it is just yeah. like so intense. Yeah. That's not right. That's yeah. that's so much to put on an individual mm -hmm. who doesn't have any of their stuff together, is living probably in like either residence or in like a shitty home yeah. with a ton of roommates where they probably get no privacy mm -hmm. and they have to come to the library because it's not quiet at home. Yeah. Like that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, that's a huge mix right there and they probably don't have a full-time job and they're eating shitty cup of noodles like and you're probably also very lonely you're you know? probably really lonely yeah. yeah man being a student is like it's tough it's tough it's tough and universities aren't providing enough resources especially uft honestly the rate at which people are committing suicide at uft is really effed up yeah they need to do more but yeah that was definitely one of the stories i um I think I had remembered seeing this like meme online of this person who had set an alarm when they were studying of like really? their period where they could cry. Like it was scheduled oh. in. <laughs> and I think I saw that and I was like, a cry could be nice. And I think I just, that's why I started crying. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. If people, you know, it's bad when somebody makes a meme about it. Cause it means that it's common enough that majority of people yeah. are going to get it. They're going to understand it. Exactly. Now that I've shared my stories, I'm wondering, have you ever cried in public? You know, mm -hmm. off the top of my dome, off my dome top, Straight off the nog i don't think that i have really? and if i have it was probably like when i was young like in grade school like yeah. elementary school i don't think that counts i yeah i don't think i've gotten to that point i don't know I, and like i mentioned before i don't like crying in public i don't mm. like asking for help i don't like when people see me as weak or vulnerable yeah um and that's it's in general something that i'm like you know trying to find a balance in even when i have had like the worst days ever yeah like in the last whatever podcast where i talked about <laughs> injuring my back yeah i didn't even i didn't cry in front of our mm. roommates yeah i didn't cry at all like i only let out like one tear when i had you on the phone yeah. and it was because like it was you yeah right you with, wanted your emmy yeah <laughs> but with our roommates i was like Aww. i can do this i have a question for you yeah what was your parents reaction to when you would cry when you were little like was it like stop crying no i don't or did they like encourage you to let it out I don't know. Because I know a lot of men struggle with that, with like being able to show their emotions and like cry because a lot of people say like man up. Right. You know? it, I don't think it was like that, though. It, mm -hmm. it was never like I've never, for example, had my parents say stop crying. Yeah. Or suck it up or mm -hmm. that's weak or be strong or anything yeah. like that. They've never said that to me. So Interesting. where it comes from, I'm not really sure. It's somewhere else that's like deeply rooted that i yeah. <laughs> maybe need to go to therapy for or something <laughs> maybe. i don't, know. <laughs> I don't maybe know therapy's always the answer it probably yeah so that's about it for today do you have anything you want to add yeah everybody should cry in public more mm. and i won't stop to ask how you're doing <laughs> 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 i'm just kidding no cry if you wanna yeah. or don't and uh go to therapy that's what it's all about, you guys. That's so. what it's all about. It's just going to therapy. <laughs> no, but for real, you guys should let us know if there's been a ridiculous or outrageous time that you've cried in public. Mm -hmm. Of course, as long as you want to share. We would love to hear it in the comments below. So let us yes. know. Also, make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps us out with our YouTube channel. And it's the easiest and cheapest way to support our channel. Heck yeah. <laughs> So with all that being said, you guys, we will see you in the next pod. Peace. Peace.